20 years ago in 1996, psychiatric therapist John Edmonds and his wife Joyce, who was an ex-FBI employee, purchased a blissful ranch in Rainbow Valley, Arizona. It had everything John wanted and was a place where you could quite literally disappear from the rest of the world. But from the moment they moved in, things took an unpredicted turn that has since caused the Stardust Ranch to become one of the strangest and somewhat unheard of properties in the world. Now, all of the stories surrounding this place could either be a made-up fantasy or symptom of sleep paralysis by what appears to be a seemingly sane and intelligent man, or the single most convincing piece of evidence that we have that extraterrestrial life has visited planet Earth. Sit tight for this one because there is a lot to take in and things are going to get interesting. When John and Joyce spent all of their money on purchasing and moving into the Stardust Ranch, from day one they realised it was not the plot John had always dreamt of. For starters, the previous owner had left all of their belongings behind, and after contacting the real estate agent who sold them the ranch, John was told that it would all be moved within the next few hours. When John returned later that day, all of the owner's belongings were piled into the swimming pool on the property. John was furious and rang the real estate agent who got in contact with the previous owners. They said they visited the ranch that day and seen their stuff in the pool, assuming John had moved it in a fit of rage for them to collect. They refused to take it away and John had to dispose of it himself. The question is, who moved all of these belongings? John has never really said who or what he thinks was responsible. Then, just a few days after all this commotion, a rough-looking man approached the ranch with a machete in his hand. Being in the middle of nowhere and help being miles away, John was on edge but still went out to talk to him. This man told him that he lived on the ranch, and after John told him to leave, thinking he was crazy, he mumbled something that will stick with John for the rest of his life. You are going to wish I was here. You are really going to be sorry. There are monsters on this property, and I kill them. The man turned around and left, and John has never seen him again. Shortly after this encounter, the couple started noticing orbs and strange lights in the sky surrounding the ranch, and also saw helicopters and military jets appearing to be interacting with them. It was around this time that the supposed visits from the Greys began. John has described them as being around 40 inches tall, with large compound eyes similar to a fly, and grey snake-like skin that is cold to the touch. These Greys apparently appear in groups of three and invade their home at night. Over the many years this has gone on, the Greys have apparently became particularly attached to Joyce, and she is described being frequently attacked and molested by them, and is always unable to scream whilst this is going on. She has also had puncture-type injuries as if she has been stabbed with a syringe and sustained large bruises on her inner thighs, stomach and shoulders after the believed assaults. And John has also experienced a case of missing time and transportation, which he believes was down to being abducted. Enough was enough and John decided to buy an arsenal of weapons to protect him, his wife and also his animals. You see, John has been and still does use the ranch to look after rescued horses and dogs and on more than one occasion, he has been horrified to find his horses mutilated with their tongue and eyes removed. He also lost three Rottweilers who apparently attacked a Grey and died a week later, despite not receiving any visible injuries in the attack. When the next attack came, John was ready at hand with his guns. This time it was on his wife, who was apparently being abducted and drawn outside to what he describes as a cone of light. John shot at the Greys and the craft with a rifle until they retreated. I know what you're probably thinking, this guy is totally insane, but it doesn't end here, not by a long shot. This is actually where things get even more intense. For many years, John and his wife were very reluctant to talk about the activity for fear of being humiliated. But what they did do was collect some fluid and a chunk of tissue that was stuck on the end of John's sword after he had stabbed and killed a grey. The entire body had disappeared like usual, but the chunk on his sword had not, so this was sent off to be analysed. The samples were sent to Michigan to the renowned biophysicist W.C. Levengood, and after tests, this is what he came back with. The fluid appeared to be pure hemoglobin, similar to samples collected from unusual cattle mutilations linked to alien life in recent years, and the blood did not match any other animal or human specimen to have ever lived on Earth, apart from the sites of cattle mutilation. The skin sample also looks like segmented grass, but it wasn't grass, it was an unknown plant cross animal based material that has never been seen before. Initially, Levin Good was very excited about this discovery, telling John that he had the holy grail proof of alien life visiting Earth, but then something changed. Levin Good stopped corresponding with John and showed no further interest in the project. Then, unexpectedly, he was killed in a freak accident in his lab, and John claims the samples went missing. 
Now, what's interesting is Dr. Levengood is the real deal. He is not made up and his death actually happened. So this is one you cannot say is made up and you could say it does add some credibility to the unbelievable stories John has shared. Despite not giving too many interviews due to many visits from the supposed Men in Black, which John said are pale white and alien-like, much like the typical Men in Black I have talked about in previous videos, John's demeanor is also very convincing and it's hard to dismiss him and his stories as completely false due to his career credentials and seemingly normal personality. But if this is the holy grail of alien life, then why is this story so unheard of and why haven't tons of people been there to investigate? Well, it has been on Coast to Coast AM where John made an appearance and a research team did visit some time ago and believe they spotted a grey which dropped this stone-like object. After being analysed, it was said it would be near impossible to recreate this on Earth as the star is carved dead in the centre of the rock and is also slightly tapered. There was also a recent Ghost Adventures episode that seems to have sparked some more spotlight on the Stardust Ranch. What the Ghost Adventures team found was incredibly high levels of magnetic field similar to those found around the site Travis Walton claims he was abducted by aliens in 1975 which is actually not that far from the Stardust Ranch. They also discovered that the son of a previous resident had killed himself in the sitting room, leading them to believe there is both extraterrestrial and paranormal activity going on at the ranch. However, despite them all feeling uneasy, they did not capture any greys on camera, but John believes that he has. During an interview with Kerry Cassidy for Project Camelot, it appeared that two what John believes is greys were in the background peering over his shoulder. Take a look. Uh, so, yeah, there's been a tremendous amount of events that happened during that period of time. Hundreds. Yeah, there's been a tremendous amount of events that happened during that period of time. Hundreds. I can't feel it. I mean, I don't have any uh, ability to be able to do, to do any kind. Who knows what is going on in that video and who knows what to make of the stories that John has shared over the years. Even he himself has said he can see how people would think he's crazy and he would have a hard time believing them. Now that doesn't make them any more credible because there are still things that do not add up. Like why doesn't John have cameras set up all over the house? And if everything he has said is true and like many believe the men in black and alien cover-ups exist, do you still think he would still be talking or even alive if he had the holy grail of alien existence? But then again, he has stated many times that there is nothing in this for him and he is torn apart by what has happened to him and his wife and what was supposed to be his dream ranch. And if you've seen any of his interviews, he seems pretty convincing. So once all is said and done, there are three scenarios for what is going on here. John is making everything up for fame, profit or attention. He is suffering from sleep paralysis or some kind of mental illness and is seeing things that are not there, which he believes is real. Or he is telling the truth and the Stardust Ranch is the most interesting and overlooked place on the planet involving extraterrestrials. After all, NASA have been spending billions of dollars on the search for alien life in the furthest reaches of the universe. Well, who's to say they are not already right here on Earth and people like John seem so insane that no one wants to take them seriously.